Hello there. My name is Aurel Fouri, and together with my friends, we host and produce the human interest chat show called The African Dream. Today, we're going to talk about renowned Ghanaian photographers, bloggers, and PR practitioners in the persons of Samuel Apiajan and Emmanuel Apiajan, aka Twins Don't Beg. They are twins born on April 3rd, 1989, who completed their education at the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Kumasi, Ghana. Twins Don't Beg are the CEO of Swag of Africa News, a popular news website for current news across Ghana and parts of Africa. The Jan brothers are currently official photographers for the wife of the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Samira Baumia, Ghana's second lady. The brothers, in an April 2018 interview with the AfricanDream.net, recorded in Accra, Ghana, shared their photography tips, some of their favorite and some of their difficult shoots, and also where they intend to take their passion in the long term. During my conversation with Twins Don't Beg, they also talked about their love of photography while expressing a lot of admiration and respect for photographers in Ghana and across Africa. They, however, singled out ace Ghanaian photographer Emmanuel Bobby, aka Bob Pixel, for his exceptional work in photography. Enjoy the interview in the video and follow them on Twitter. Instagram and Facebook as Twins Don't Beg. This is Orla Furi. Join me, let's sit down and chat with these amazing young talents. This is Orlo Foyo of the African Dream. We're here with Twin Stone Beck. They are renowned photographers from Ghana in West Africa, and we're going to chat a little bit with them and get to know about their passion for photography, videography, and I hear you guys do PR as well. Yeah, definitely. Welcome to the African Dream. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thanks for hosting us. Pleasure, pleasure. <laughs> Formally introduce yourself. Um, I'm Imanol Apiajan, and, um, and I'm also Samuel Apiajan. Welcome to the African Dream, the Jan Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, tell us, um, what inspired your passion for photography and videography? We have mostly been behind the scenes and pushing a lot of you know, content, especially media. And one thing we realized that when you go for an event and you need um, pictures and content for PR, you, you always found it difficult because you don't get very good pictures or videos or content. Right. Yeah, so we like we 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 you know you have to identify a problem and and find a solution. What, find a solution and once you do that you become rich. <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys rich then? <laughs> uh, we're on our way. Getting there. Yeah, yeah. getting there. Getting so there. that's that's the whole um, where the whole um, passion started. Did you study photography or videography to begin with? Well, um, there are different ways of um, studying photography or videography or even studying in general. Right. Um, some can be in school, that's um, the normal way people study. But you can also study by observing other um, professionals in the industry. Right. So for us, we studied photography or cinematography from um, a renowned cinematographer. His name is um, Nicolas Leroy. When um, is he out here in Ghana? No, he's he's, he's, he's from, from Spain. Spain. He's okay. from Spain right now. Okay. And, um, but he's based in London. So um, they did a movie in Ghana. That's a Hollywood um, movie featuring um, Jimmy Jim Louise, right. um, Boris Herrero from Sinbad, and few other um, Ghanaian cast. So um, we're fortunate to be on the set for two months, which. Were you shooting? Yeah, shooting. And, nice. 
uh, we're shooting in Kufuridia in the eastern region of Ghana, so we're behind the cameras every time, assisting the director, and he's also assisting the producer. Nice. So um, we always ask questions, reasons why um, he took this kind of shot, and he also had the time to also take us through uh, most of the equipments that they use, the red cameras, the drones, the chips and all that. So right after um, that movie set, um, we had a, a bit of knowledge about cinematography. Right. And we also had to also learn on our own through um, going to other renowned photographers in Ghana. Sometimes you can even go to their house, chase them for softwares and let them take us through how to edit. So you and literally self-taught and Yeah, it wasn't, observed. It wasn't easy. <laughs> um, sometimes you might take a picture and you just feel like, oh, no, nah, this is not good. Right, right. This is not good because you can also see other people's work. Some, someone like Bob Pizzle, you can see their work and you'll be like, no, I want to achieve something right, like that. And right. it means you have to do something to get to that um, stage. So basically, what did you study in school? Well, I studied post-harvest technology, okay. which is more um, a divert, more like a specialization in agriculture. Right. Where, yeah. where was that? Where um, did you study? Kenya University, Kwame Nkrumah University. Did you guys go to the same university? Yeah, in Dam yeah. I was studying landscape design and management. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. the first degree. Cool. That's that's like a total 360, Whoa. you know, from photography. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Right but you, you, you do what pays the bills, but most importantly, you do what you're passionate yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. So, um, mention some of your clients, people you've worked with in the past. Well, here in Ghana, we've worked with almost every, everyone. Um, in Nigeria, we've worked with um, Toki Makinwa, who's a renowned um, TV and radio personality, and also an author. Um, we've worked with um, Cory Dubelo. Nigerian a musician skills um, skills mm. like a very big Nigerian top Nigerian artist um, in, in the Hollywood part we work with Jimmy Jim Louise nice. we work with um, Ori Serrero and it's and when it comes to Ghana we've worked with everybody every, 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 everybody that's interesting no wonder you guys are so renowned <laughs> now I am uh, I saw a photo of um, the second lady yeah. Samira Baumia oh, and yeah. um, I found out that one of you took that photo yeah um, give us a little background to the making of that photo well that photo was and um, was taken on the 6th of March um, 2018 this is how the whole thing um, happened and um, was the sword cutting ceremony for the National Cathedral and right. the president was the the vice president and second lady and um, most church and uh, many church officials right. so I was on a sixth match and um, celebration Ghana everything it was all about um, Ghana at 63 right. right yeah so we wanted to capture something um, significant and they got up to do the final sword cutting and and she happened to go stand in front of a screen that was projecting Ghana flag and I knew that was it and I that was the moment yeah that was the moment <laughs> and I had to steal that shot I took a couple of shots and I showed it to her and she was like wow yeah. wow wow and I was like can I post it and I was like yeah sure sure say it so immediately I posted that picture within 30 minutes the picture had gone viral and a lot of people were just saying why don't you guys put your logo or watermarks on the pictures and right. all that and then we have always let that um, be our trademark right. by not putting and i think most people get a chance to use our work for free mm -hmm. and do other um stuff so yeah that's that's one reason um why we we never uh, um, put our or tag 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 right. tag there's, there's, there's an old Ghanaian saying that goes at the part in the tournament. The tournament exactly. So if, if the work is good, you don't have to advertise it. Yeah, It'll exactly. sell itself. Exactly. So that's pretty cool. Um, I saw a shot um, that was taken of Ebony, the late musician, yeah. which um, also went viral in a very short time. Describe 
the attempts that came into yeah. making that short okay, and so, the yeah. feeling you got from all that euphoria after yeah. it went viral. Um, this happened um, during the Miss Malaika, that's a 2017 edition of Miss Malaika and she happened to be an artist on the bill so um, she came with all her dancers and all that and she, they brought this chair that depicted that she's a new queen in the music industry so she came to sit on the chair and if you're a photographer you just see a moment and you know that definitely you have to capture that moment and um, we just took that moment and right after um, she died and um, may her soul rest in peace most of the people were using um, those pictures to um, wash and she, those pictures were also used to do some few posters and yeah that was just it that's interesting yeah tell us some of the photographers in the Ghanaian industry that inspire your work whether they are alive or not <laughs> <laughs> well um we'll give it up first of all to um, Bob Pixel and um, he's a very good photographer. Well, we first we didn't officially meet him, but the first time we met him, he was the one who even um, approached us and was like, "Hey, you guys, you look familiar." And he mentioned our name and was like, "Amber Pizzo." And I was like, "Wow, I've been following your work forever, and um, this is like an honor to meet you." And he was like, "You guys are doing amazing, and you guys um, should continue whatever you're doing." We heard from of him from back in KNUST and at that time we weren't doing photography but we were just sitting somewhere admiring his work and right. I think that was um, an honor to, to have met him. him in person. Yeah. Well, the others we follow and we just watch, watch them from afar. <laughs> <laughs> nice, yeah, nice. Yeah. Tell me, um, what has been one of your most difficult shoot? and how did you overcome the difficulty to finish the project? Well, I think the most difficult shoot was the one with, um, which was like a total rebranding for the second lady, which was done 2015, 15, yeah. 2015 late 2015. Why was it about. difficult? It was because, imagine you, you are being given the chance to put together a shoot for an incoming second lady. Um, and everything was, was in our hands. We had to look for the right stylists, we had to look for the right makeup artists, we had to look for the right location. And it, it, it was scary looking at the fact that we were in charge of, of such a project. And I think um, the friends that we, or the, any, all the people that we contacted as they didn't disappoint, I think everybody managed to um, pull up. Heck, of course, it's the, yeah. it's the second lady. <laughs> yeah, so everybody did their best. Um, shout outs to Bubune or Bivy Official, Wena who did her makeup and 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 Bivy did the stylist and, and Africa Regent Hotel hosted right. us for the photo shoot. And I think those pictures brought a bit of, a, a lot of light into the 2016 campaign right. because she was all over. People were admiring her for um, her pictures, people loved it because of how we projected her on social media right. and her personality and 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 her and Samira herself for allowing herself to be because not it's not everybody that allows um, herself to be photographed or be projected in a certain way. So right. it was one of the most difficult projects and um, that still we, ended up well. Yeah, it, it ended up well. It was, it was a lot of butterflies in Aston. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell me, um, what are some tips, tricks or advices you have for people watching who are into photography or videography? Or what are some of the things you do to sharpen your skills yeah. as you keep climbing up in the industry? Well, first of all, um, in the photography industry in Ghana, it's I always say it's quite a big sea um, where um, the biggest fishes would have something to eat from, and also the smallest crabs and prawns would also have something to benefit. Is he, from. Is he that poetic? <laughs> fishes, crabs, and prawns. Yeah, you see. Don't, don't say seafood. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as you are beginning photography in Ghana, um, even if you start from somewhere, you still definitely get clients to work with because everybody wants moments to capture from and to capture. So um, my little advice 
to um, starting photographers. Um, they start should, small and climb up. They should just start from their own small circle, their own small um, area. Shoot family members, friends, family, because they are the ones who will be able to project your work. Again, you have to be very humble and you shouldn't let everything be all about money. It shouldn't be like, um, I've taken a picture of you and it's going to, I'm going to charge you for this. You just have to be humble, work with the clients, make sure that the client is always satisfied before you can even think about money. And again, you have to invest in equipment. You always have to. Yeah, was, everyone is as good as equipment. You always have to buy right. new equipment. So, that so your equipment define you. Yes. Well, yeah, definitely. I'll say as a that. Photographer, you have to always imagine um, you driving a Ferrari <laughs> and somebody driving a uh, what car? <laughs> Tico. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and you guys are you guys are giving the same distance to cover in right. in one minute. Right. Definitely. The one Even if I'm not a good driver, trust me, I would able to yeah, do exactly. so just, just drive so safe though you, exactly. have to, you have to do lots of investments right. as a photographer I know you also have to learn every 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 um, photo shoot or every um, segments that you, you are doing should be better than the previous one that you um, yeah. did and exactly. again you just have to also learn from others who are also successful in the photography industry so basically invest in yourself yeah. invest in your yeah. skill don't let money be the motivation. Yep. Invest in equipment and, and don't wait for the big moment. No. Even you can shoot your family members or random yeah. things out there. Yeah, exactly. That's that's good advice. That's good advice. Um, as far as giving back is, is, is concerned, I know um, you said money is not a motivation, yeah. but there are many ways you can give back, you know, from all the skills and talents God has blessed you with. What are some of these ways that well, you are already you know, we've back? started we've started mentoring a lot of young photographers. They always come up to us whenever we go out, especially um, when whenever we shoot in an event and I see a young photographer struggling, I just find a minute or two to teach them one or two um, tricks. Then constantly we are having conversations with them. Some would want to follow you everywhere right. so that they can learn, but maybe some of the issues that we do won't allow us to bring um, because it's it's kind of like a bit official and and private. private so it wouldn't allow us to always bring a lot of people around but any little chance we get um, those who hit us up on our social media pages we find time to connect, impact, with, them. Yeah, connect with them right. and, and just give them one or two advices and we are also looking um, looking up to like the future we will be able to surprise some young photographers because we know people as a photographer you struggle with equipment so i know god is going to bless us enough for us to also bless other people nice. so we'll be able to you know make um other people other photographers let me put it that way right right well, that's good um just let me know where are you taking this you're all over ghana to start with you have a hundred thousand plus followers on instagram you're like all over africa where are you taking this well the next step for us um is to also conquer the other part of um, the world um we've started already we've been to london we've been to dubai and um, nigeria um, we've been to a few other places but we have thinking about expanding, going to the US and setting up a photography business there, um, covering, going, covering events, BET, BET, Grammys. Grammys. So I think basically that's the next step for us, covering major events no. that happens um, no. festivals and still be in Ghana. Right. So, so we go, we cover then we come back and just be a shining star in Africa. So that's, that's the next step for um, this, us. This show is called The African Dream. Juxtaposition to your work as photographers and videographers and PR people. What is your African dream? Well, uh, our African dream, um, swag of Africa. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Short um, and sweet. <laughs> yeah, swag and of Africa. In simple terms, it's just to let everybody in the world know that Africa has a swag and um, a certain um, 
a certain light. attitude, a certain light that we can be able to also do better than other people in other parts of the world. And our swag is different, ours is unique. Our, even just um, imagine the way we dance in Africa. Or right. We, right. we have this way of unique way of dancing and, and other people. The rhythm, and then our culture, our food, we, that's what we want to put out there. So that's our African dream. Interesting. Well, folks, this is Earl Furi here on the African Dream, and we're here with Twin Stoneberg. They are renowned Ghanaian photographers who are leaving their footprints across the continent of Africa, and as you heard them say, global domination. Yeah. They're coming, and now um, <laughs> get ready for them. Yeah. If you want to connect with them, their social media um, accounts are going to be shared by themselves individually in a moment. Yeah, so um, to get us on Instagram is at Swag of African News, Swag of African News, and for him it's and, um, Twins on Leg everywhere, Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, and um, just Twins on Leg, or you can Google us, Twins on Leg, and all, all our social, social media yeah. pages will pop up, and you can just us up. And for convenience sake, you're seeing them right now on the screen, so keep in mind, connect with them, they are very, very accommodating guys, and Thanks a lot for making the time to come out here yeah. to be with us on the African Dream in Accra, Ghana. Wonderful work you guys are doing out there. Viewers, mm -hmm. this is Earl mm -hmm. of the African Dream. We end the show with a series of photos by Twin Stoneberg. Enjoy it and get connected, get in touch with them. They're doing an amazing job. Thanks, man. Peace out. <laughs> Thanks a lot for making the time, right. man. Appreciate it.